there everyone, Andy here at Audi Upgrades. Hope you're well. A uh, bit of a different video here today to show you. I kind of wanted to walk through uh, a process that's been released that allows the virtual cockpits, the generation one virtual cockpits found typically in the A4, B9, H5, HW, the Q5 FY, the Q74M and the Mark III TTs, the FV8S variants. Um, if you've got one of those, and you've got the virtual cockpit installed, uh, as I say, the generation one, um, a process was released onto the internet um, on how to enable the sports displays. So if you own an SQ7 or an SQ5, uh, a TTRS, for example, or a TTS, um, uh, or an S5 or an RS5 or an S4 or an R, you get the idea. Um, you, in the virtual cockpit, you have the option to, to change the view layout of the virtual cockpit from either the standard view where you've got kind of the two dials, the RPM and the miles per hour, or also a, just a big kind of center sports dial um, display. Now, the old way of enabling that old display, oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. The old way of enabling that big center dial um, was only possible if you had a new virtual cockpit. Um, and it had less than 100 kilometers on the odometer or around 63, 64 miles, I think that is. Um, if it was under 100 kilometers on the odometer, there was a setting you could change through coding uh, on that cockpit that would enable that, that S dial display. But as soon as 100 kilometers was passed, that ability to change that was locked and it was impossible to change because um, you can't roll the mileage back. So, there was no way to really do it. So people who really wanted that S kind of center dial on their virtual cockpit would either have to buy a new virtual cockpit, and they're not cheap, you know, best part of 2000 pounds, brand new, or a refurbished from Audi is pretty much nearly the same price, uh, or find one with less than 100 kilometers on it, or whatever that is in miles, what I said earlier, but the chances of that are obviously very, very rare. So it was quite a limited option. And then, and then someone released, or oh, someone, not me, I will point out, I did not create this process. Um, someone released the ability to change and enable that S-style layout, no matter what mileage you've got on your car. And many people out there now offer this because they've gained access to that solution. Um, I think it was developed by someone in Russia. I, I don't know that for certain, but that's my hunch. Um, and I, as I say, I didn't make this solution. I have this solution, but I didn't make it. So I hold my hands up and point that out very clear now. Um, but I do offer this to customers um, to have it enabled. And I'm going to show you that now. So this is my own Q7. It's not an SQ7. And I thought, um, because I've done it on other customers' cars, I've never really had time to do it on my own car. And I thought, what the hell, I will do it, even though I don't own an SQ7. Um, I thought I'll do it just so I can show you that process and show it being enabled on the virtual cockpit in real time. Um, so yeah, many people offer this uh, on the internet, on social media and so forth, but it wasn't created by any of them, at least not to my knowledge. Um, everyone's being, everyone kind of in this world of retrofits has ascertained the solution and now they offer it. Um, a couple of things to bear in mind, really. The main one is the, the virtual cockpits need to be Gen 1 uh, virtual cockpits or Generation 1 virtual cockpits, uh, what we call FPKs. Um, and the other thing is the virtual cockpits need to be on a certain software level. So we have to kind of check that first, uh, or, or if not, we have to update the software first and then enable the kind of that S-style layout. So here is my own Q7. As I said, this is a 2016 Q7. This is my own car and I am going to enable this on my virtual cockpit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera, put it in the driver's seat, point it at the virtual cockpit and then on my laptop, which is uh, just off camera here, I'm going to run it but I'll still have the microphone attached to me here and, um, and then yeah, you can kind of see it being enabled in the process. So it's quite a simple process, um, it's just running a process uh, on the laptop then we have to clear a few fault codes, reboot the virtual cockpit, and that's basically it. So I thought this would be a good video for people to see um, and actually walk through the process. Um, and yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna grab the camera now, 
set it up in here, and then we're gonna run the process. So let's do that now. Okay guys, I've set the camera up pointing to my virtual cockpit in my Q7, and um, <laughs> that took long enough to do. Uh, I am really here. Just hold my hands up, hello. Uh, <laughs> hello. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is turn the car on. Let's turn the car on. And uh, let me change my oil. So here is the uh, virtual cockpit up and running. So I've got no um, uh, virtual cockpit display here enabled at the moment. I've just got the classic Q7 display. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the process on the, uh, on the laptop and that will cause the virtual cockpit to reboot and you should be able to see that and then the sports display will and then we'll clear the faults that are generated when it reboots and then turn the car off and on again and the sports display should be enabled so let's do that now so i'm just walking over to my laptop and just make sure i'm connected to the car and i'm just loading up the screen run and you saw the virtual cockpit there reboot you can see we've got a couple of faults here like that so you can see the virtual cockpit there rebooted so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear any faults that are generated on another on my on my usual computer I use here so let's just do that now. Clear those away. Uh, because the virtual cockpit is rebooted, it loses connection to the other modules. And so the other modules throw a bit of a tantrum because they can't, <laughs> they can't see the virtual cockpit. So we just clear all those faults, now it's rebooted. Make sure everything's okay, which it is. And now if I go over here um, and uh, on, the, on that little left arrow here, this left little three little lines you see here, if I choose this, I've now got a layout option here. And if I choose that, I can now switch between sport and classic. So I choose sport and say yes. And then it says loading layout, operation not possible, changes take a few seconds, please wait. And there we go, we've got the center layout enabled again, like that. So that's how long the process takes. It took me longer to actually set the camera up to point at the virtual cockpit. So that's what basically happens. Um, as I say, this process was not developed by me. I've just uh, got access to it because it is available on the internet. And so I offer it to customers uh, who wish to have it. Uh, and as I say, we just need to make sure that the virtual cockpit is on a certain software level before applying it. But if, that's, if it isn't, then we can update the virtual cockpit first and then apply this uh, process to enable the layout. So I kind of wanted you guys to see that. Um, I hope that was of interest. And uh, any questions, of course, please do let me know. Many thanks.